So now that PlayStation 5 has been on the market for like four months now, and I say that loosely, technically it's been out for four months, uh, we've got a lot of accessories that have finally hit the market from third-party companies, and so we've got a bunch here to test out, ranging from new face plates to things we can change with the controller and all that good stuff. So we've got a bunch here. Let's unbox it, review them, and find out if they're worth it. Let us start with this one. I do not remember which one is which, of course, but the larger ones can... You can probably figure out those are going to be our face plates, and we do also have another travel case to try as well. The last video, the eBay one, we had a travel case that was very heavy duty and high quality, but I think that was like 130, 150 bucks or something. Really expensive. This one's a little bit cheaper. We're starting off with um, another charging stand for the DualSense controller. So there's a ton of these. They've got like a white accenting piece, and this is next to nothing. I'll put prices up as always. Uh, this, I think. I think I know what this is, and a few people have already been doing videos on these, I think, but this will be our, yep, it's another one of these things. Okay, so it's a cooling fan for PS5. Now this is just, without a doubt, the most redundant thing possible. These things never, never worked or probably added additional airflow to a console. PS5 inherently is already an extremely quiet and relatively cool console for what it's doing. So. This will try, I think it's actually supposed to push air in the wrong direction from my understanding, so we'll take a look at that. Which means it's doing it's doing more harm than good, but that's kind of what those things are always known for, as far as I know. Yeah, I think I know what's in here, so be careful not to nick it. You know we order one of these every single video, and uh, this one's a little different though. Yes, it is for the remote. So if you have the PS5 remote, then you can put a little controller condom on it. A remote condom. So we've got a nice little navy blue. Oh, it's textured for your pleasure. For anyone's pleasure, whoever is deciding to pick this thing up. This might actually make some sense, considering that on a flat surface, it's very easy to just reach for this thing and then you know, have one of those numbers. Maybe this will help it. Next up, I, okay, yeah, I think. <laughs> Cause like, there's always some that are just so dumb. Even beyond the, what, the cooling fan I just showed you. This one's like, I saw this, I'm like, really? It's a racing wheel. Why? <laughs> why do we, why do we do things like this? What? Is this, I, come on, is this not a little dumb? It's really, I saw this and I was like, all right. I don't even know how much it was, but I was like, add to cart. We'll take a look at that. This is really light. It is, I don't actually, I don't remember what this is. Okay, now I remember what it is. <laughs> yeah, so these are pretty, pretty cheap. And this is a very, very friendly mod you can do to a dual sense if you haven't already noticed uh, a few others post about this this trim piece on a dual sense is it's very easy to take off so i know a lot of people that are sometimes playing consoles and things you're not comfortable with you know opening your machine or you know fiddling around with your controllers but this particular trim piece comes off very easily so if you can get one little trim tool right in there and there pops off it's all clips basically no screws or nothing and you kind of lift that out safely so you can change this little accenting color piece uh, as I'm recording this we still don't have any sort of official color variations for the hardware or Sony's controller for that matter so and again they're cheap so that's a, a quick little easy thing you can do <clears throat> I'll save that travel case for last now I ordered uh, three three of these three different face plates because you have a lot of options with these I mean, the market's, it's, it's over now, right? We had news stories about Sony shutting down these companies and then them not wanting to offer additional faceplates, but the floodgates are open. China's got a bunch of these on eBay now. And um, you have a ton of options. It's the same faceplate. There's so many sellers on there. All you have to do is pick the cheapest one, which is what I did. 
So this, I think, was like 30 something dollars, taxes and shipping included. But other sellers had them at like 50, 60, and then there's, you know, the higher quality ones like uh, Customize My Plates and D-Brand, of course. But assuming that these are of a nice quality, you could probably get away with just using this. And I ordered three of them, but only, only two showed up. So we've got a blue one here. And it's a nice blue. I think this is nice. I don't know, you tell me. I think they're only for disc models right now, though. Here, I'll get you in on the, uh, the peel away. Rudden. Yeah, so I ordered a, a black one, too, which is like the one I... If one of them wasn't going to show up, I would have preferred the black one to, to get here, but we've got red and blue. Red is pretty, pretty popping. Pretty nice, I have to say. But, you know, red's a, also the kind of color where, I don't know, it's not super bright. Maybe, maybe more towards orange, depending on how you look at it. And if you're curious about what the inner texture is, where normally PlayStation buttons would be, it's just, I mean, it's not a shape or anything, it's just textured. So it, it will give the appearance that it might have the, the PlayStation buttons. You really have to know they're there to even like appreciate the fact that they're little tiny PS buttons, but that does not have it. Now our travel case. Okay. It's got a giant PS5 logo on it. I'm I'm pretty sure you don't want to be walking around with this. I don't I, I wouldn't want to advertise that I'm carrying around what is essentially a single bitcoin. Or at least that's how some people treat it nowadays. PS5 some relaxing end for you. So there's not a whole lot of room with this. Uh, well, I guess this is fine. You got enough for the console, two controllers, uh, the, whatever this is for. Probably to hang it. Got some games up there. Not too bad. Oh, we do actually have uh, one other accessory, which I forgot to bring over. Hold on. You know we gotta do at least one skin on every one of these videos so it looks a little silly. And so here's the thing with this. PS5 is white, right? So the skins don't work anyway. But combine the skin with one of those cheap face plates that is a good color match and that might actually look okay. Granted, the console is still going to be a pain to wrap because it's so large and it can't, you know, fold over. Uh, that's why the white plates disrupt any sort of color match you want to do. But this, <laughs> this is why I wanted the black face plate to show up. <laughs> so it's like a PlayStation 2 themed PS5 skin. And I thought, all right, well, this obviously won't work with a white console, but buy $30 black plates, throw these on. That should actually look reasonable if you want to. You know, I, I still think it's tacky, but if you want to go for that, you could do it. And, uh, well, I guess now we're going to have to match this with our blue faceplate, which I think would actually be maybe cooler. Depends on how you look at it. But we've got some uh, more skins to test as well. All right, those are all of our accessories laid out. And now it's time to do what you're all expecting. We'll review each one individually and find out if they're worth it. Starting off with the DualSense blue trim piece, the only thing you should really worry about here is making sure you've got something small enough and non-abrasive enough to actually remove the existing trim piece without damaging it. I used a very tiny flathead screwdriver, but even that, just be very careful. Once you've got each bottom end popped off, you can pry the whole piece off very easily working your way up, and the new trim piece goes in from top to bottom, snap everything into place, and make sure you check the seal underneath the controller directly. If you've got a noticeable gap there, then it's not snapped in all the way. But after that, you're pretty much good to go, and I'd 
I'd say this is a very nice and expensive way to add a little flair to the controller. The fit and finish is good and it definitely looks like it could be stock. My only gripe is that this trim is a little bit thicker than the stock piece. So the mute button as an example, you'll notice it doesn't stick out nearly as much as it otherwise should have, but it's still really easy to press. So I'm really just splitting hairs at this point. Overall, I'd say these are a good buy. Okay, so this racing wheel thing, you take it out of the box and it's got this back cover piece that you need to attach and this is what will securely hold your DualSense controller and to its credit, once you've got this set up, the controller will be well secured, it's not going anywhere, but right away when you do hold this, it's just dumb, there's zero point to this thing, all it really will do is add unnecessary bulk and if anything, it's more difficult to reach the sticks or trying to hit L1, R1 and L2 and R2, this thing is just an utter waste. Properly applying the remote sleeve was pretty simple, and that's about it really. Now, you all know at this point, I don't really care for these, never did. I understand there's some good use cases, but I will say with the PS5's remote, the buttons are already not very pronounced, so some of them are completely flush with the entire surface of the remote. So when you add something like this, you're hiding the buttons down even further, making it even more of a chore to actually select something because you have to apply more pressure. But the good thing though, is that this does pass the spin test, or the lack of spin test, I should say. Out of the box, the DualSense charging station does come with a separate USB-C cable. It's pretty short and there's no power brick, but at least you do get a cable. And the charging stand itself, it's predictably lightweight and sort of cheap feeling, but the front does have an LED indicator to show you when controllers are charging or not, which is nice. And the actual point of connection will be on the bottom. The controllers will have to be lined up perfectly though to make a solid contact, which is really the biggest drawback here. It's not an easy set it and forget it sort of thing. And when you go to pick up a controller, it might lift up the whole stand with it. That seems to be a running theme with these cheaper stations, but luckily you can expect a similar charging speed if you were to just take your controllers and connect them to the console normally. Moving on to our red and blue face plates. These will snap in just like the stock ones. I didn't notice anything different or out of place in terms of these potentially damaging the console or not fitting correctly. They snapped in just like you'd expect. And so far I can say the camera doesn't really do the colors any justice. So the red is coming off with hints of orange just due to the lighting, but it's a solid red when it's right in front of you. Same with the blue, it comes off lighter on video, but it's a darker shade for sure. And I mean, you can't really go wrong with these, right? They're definitely cheap feeling and there is a weird pattern you can see from certain angles in the center portion, but this will turn your PS5 into a solid red or blue right away. And since they're a bit cheaper, you can experiment with the customization of these versus messing with the stock ones, which you really wouldn't want to do and possibly mess those up. It's PS5 skin time. As always, whenever you're applying these, go slow from one end, work towards the other. Don't be afraid to peel a mistake back and try again. There's a lot of room for error with these. And if you've been struggling with the PS5's complex curves, try a credit card to sweep even pressure across. And I think looking back, the best way to approach it with as little air bubbles and creases as possible, it's best to work from one corner and work towards the opposite one, at least with PS5 due to how uneven both sides of the shells are. The final result, well, depends on the angle. So the side with the disk drive came in separate pieces and it looks bogus. The other side though, not too shabby. And this mixed pretty well with the blue faceplate. Assuming you've got a disc console and you're sitting it horizontally anyway, then it's not a huge deal that one side might look really bad. You won't be able to see that much anyway. So I think once you're using a color matching plate, a skin, it's not so bad, but I still don't care for them personally. So the cooling fan, as you can see, it's got an on-off switch and USB pass-through so you don't lose one of the rear USBs that this will plug into. And unsurprisingly, this doesn't do anything for your PS5, so the console by itself already stays cool and quiet, but turn this on and... And yes, this fan is indeed blowing air into the console, not out. The area this cooler covers, this is where your PS5 pushes air out. This thing would actively work against your PS5's airflow, so do not buy this. So the carrying case is actually really nice. It's a snug fit for sure, but you will be able to carry your PS5, two controllers, all necessary cables, and even a few games in the top cargo net area. And best of all, this case is cheaper and smaller compared to that heavy duty one that we looked at before. Now I will say that case was much safer and more durable, but that's the trade-off that you have to consider. Something that looks like you're transporting launch codes or one that looks like you're trendy and asking people to rob you. Either one is a solid option, so pick your poison and go nuts. 
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Now, as we often do with these accessories, let's give them away because I will not be using most of them. Uh, I do unfortunately need to hang on to the face plates. I know that's the, the cool one, but I need those for later on to compare to other eventual face plates that come to market. But the travel case, the DualSense weird wheel thing, the trim piece, the charger, uh, all that stuff, we'll ship those out to you. So follow the link down below, only shipping in the US unfortunately, but I'll announce the winner in a week from now on my Twitter account and uh, that'll be all well and good. And then if you haven't yet, please subscribe for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates that are here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter at Mystic Ryan. And that is it. I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy.